Does artificial intelligence have bias built into the algorithms? This is AI News with our Eric. Please like, share, subscribe to our YouTube page. It definitely will help us out. I keep telling everybody, we got to wake up. We got to understand what's happening with artificial intelligence. AI has bias in it, man. And it has been biased for so long. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying it's everywhere and in every GPT, but if you understand the landscape, you'll realize that you've got to stay ahead in today's rapidly evolving world, particularly with artificial intelligence, because bias has been in algorithms for probably, I would say 15 years now in the banking system, in the healthcare industry. And one would think that in the healthcare industry, how? but big time in the healthcare industry. You know what I'm saying? So once again, like, share, subscribe. So this is called AI powered productivity, balancing innovation and ethical equality. So let me explain why I keep emphasizing the importance of learning artificial intelligence. According to MIT Sloan, generative AI can increase productivity by 40% for highly skilled workers when used effectively. And when I say use effectively, the, the, the key here is it's prompting, understanding Understanding how to prompt correctly. And that's why I keep emphasizing to people. And that's why I emphasize to people when you take a course with me, my hour course, you're going to leave the understanding how to prompt correctly. You're going to know how to use any of the GPTs, ChatGPT, Copilot, whatever you're using better than the average person. You know what I'm saying? So one of the problems here is AI is widening the social economic disparities. And this is a major ethical issue. You know what I'm saying? Because AI has the power to concentrate benefits among certain groups while leaving other groups behind, especially in low income sectors where automation is going to replace jobs instead of augmenting them, it's instead of us being able to get work from them because we don't even know artificial intelligence. So that's why I keep saying we got to start educating ourselves. We got to start seeing what's going on so we can get into this new world that's coming that's really here. You know what I'm saying? So the only way we're going to prevent AI driven productivity from deepening is we got to have policy intervention. The government has to get involved. We got to have reskilling efforts. Learn AI with AI Eric. You know what I'm saying? And we got to be able to have ethical AI deployment strategies so we can be looking for this in particular banks. And, you know, we got to understand ethical frameworks where if we was to get into the game, like, you know, me and a friend of mine is going to start an AI audit company. We're going to be able to target companies that build LLMs and use it for the onboarding systems and use it to follow employees, track their um, progress and use AI. They're going to have to be monitored. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we already behind the curve when it comes to bias algorithms. You know, this issue has been around for over 15 years and it's only going to get worse. You know what I'm saying? So we used to deal with narrow AI, but now we're facing in the AI that can think and make decisions on its own. So it ain't even going to be them programming, uh, designing the algorithm. If this algorithm is biased from the start, it's going to get worse because algorithms today and AI today, once the model was built and deployed, it starts to have a mind of its own. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they have to fine tune models because models start degrading over a course of time and they have to keep fine tuning them. You know what I'm saying? So these are the things we got to understand, man. So when we go to a bank and keep getting denied and we know this whole section is getting denied and but they getting loans, like we got to say, yo, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? And like I said, algorithm bias in the healthcare industry, that's definitely a growing crisis. Algorithm bias has existed existed for years and it's only getting worse, you know? So AI driven healthcare algorithms are often trained on biased data sets, which proportionally affect marginalized communities. You know, I'll give you an example. Some population health management models account allocate more care to white patients than black patients, even when their health conditions are similar. And the underlying issue is many of these models use historical health care spending as a proxy for medical necessity. You know what I'm saying? Reinforcing systematic inequalities because they got money and we don't. I ain't going to say all of us don't got no money, but yeah, we got low income health centers. They got better health centers and better, you know what I'm saying? So the algorithm assumes that non-Black patients need more care when the reality is opposite. So that means these algorithms 
systems are not built correctly. This is not working correctly, but they're not fixing it. And it's only going to get worse. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to escalate over time because if these models start with minor biases, they're going to get worse as time goes on and continues to operate on biased data. So if no one is checking for these models for fairness, they're just going to be amplifying their disparities. You know what I'm saying? So do, do AI developers care? Honestly, I don't know. I can't really say because it's the companies and they are that, you know, they, they, they are dedicated to their shareholders. You know what I'm saying? So and that's why I said we got to start caring because we got to be able to build models just like Deep Seat and all the Chinese companies are building these models. They're doing it for a hundred times cheaper than the companies over here. And that's one of the reasons they don't want these models to be released and let them telling you it's cheaper because that shows that we have opportunities over here. There are a billion opportunities for us to get into the AI game and not just use it, use their AIs. Of course, we want to use it, but we want to also be participant in building models ourselves. We have to be in order to get our wealth gap to go up. We have to build and be a part of this world. And imagine what we could build if we did get into this world, because we've already invented a lot of stuff that we didn't get credit for. You know what I'm saying? So key ethical concerns in AI-driven healthcare. Let's go with number one, diagnosis and treatment bias. AI models may overlook our misdiagnosis diagnosed conditions in underrepresented groups. And that's a fact. Number two, resource allocation. AI-driven hospital triad systems could favor wealthier patients over lower income patients. That is true too. Trust and transparency. That's number three. When bias is detected but ignored, mistrust in AI-driven healthcare solutions continue to grow. We don't trust the healthcare systems. We don't trust the banks. We don't even trust... I ain't even going to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But there are solutions. You know, there are solutions for ethical AI in healthcare. You know, number one, diverse training data. AI models must represent all demographics fairly. Continuous bias audits. AI decisions must be regularly reviewed to ensure fairness. Transparent AI decision making. AI recommendations must be explainable and accountable. And the models have to be readable. So when the AI company comes in, there ain't a mess. You know what I'm saying? Because if you build your AI and you build it with fairness in, in, in in, in, in the beginning, you will implement models to make sure bias don't exist. Fairness does exist. Discrimination doesn't exist. Like these models, just so y'all know who's listening to this, people can build models and don't have no racism in, it, racism in it. Now, as far as, you know, balance, it's difficult to have that, but we have to try as much as possible to treat everybody fair. You know what I'm saying? So all AI decision-making has to be fair at the end of the day. So let's talk about AI decision making in um, the hiring process and and finance. You know, AI driven decision making has been problematic for years, particularly in hiring, criminal justice, and financial services, which is the banking system. These AI systems have amplified bias for a long time, and they've never tried to eliminate them. You have had healthcare companies getting busted for discrimination in healthcare out in the algorithms. They've gotten fined and did it again and got busted. And just got fined again. So they can afford these fines. You know what I'm saying? They can afford them, you know? So I'm going to give you an example of facial recognition systems implemented in some USA states was found later to be racist towards dark-skinned people. And what happened is some of the states decided when they found out this was, you know, true, this discrimination, they decided not to use the model. But there are some states that still use the model and they know it's a, a unfair model, a biased model, but they still use it. Like, that's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So, oh man. So as far as AI bias in hiring, automated hiring systems often screen out candidates based on disability or race reinforcing workplace discrimination. And that's a fact. And we've never had a chance to actually look into see how the inputs was put in, how these models was, as far as the data being input, we never was able to look at the, this data. We don't know how this model was trained. We don't know what frameworks was used. We don't know how it was fine tuned. You know what I'm saying? That's These are the things that, I'm not saying we all have to know this, but majority is we have to get into the game so we just can't be getting tricked 
in the future and not knowing what's going on. Because like I said, it's going to get worse, you know? So as far as AI and finance, man, banks been getting busted for the last 15 years for redlining. You know, I did a story on my YouTube page on bank redlining. I think maybe about like 15 banks that got busted. They have had to give like back 130 million for four years. They was being racist toward blacks and Latinos. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So the only way we can combat bias in hiring and in finance, we got to have rigorous testing and mitigation. We got to identify and correct bias and AI systems before they are released. You know, it, inclusive AI models, platforms like they have a platform called Gap Square that analyzes salaries to ensure pay equity across gender and ethnicity and disability. Inclusive AI models, you know, they got platforms like Gap Square that analyzes salaries to ensure pay is equal across all parts, gender, ethnicity, and disability. You know what I'm saying? So we got to deal with regulatory oversight. As far as the government, they got to enforce fairness with this. You know, they got to enforce ethical AI. And I don't think the government's going to do it, to be honest with you. Trump said that he's going to leave the... Um, policing to the AI companies and to the states. <laughs> that That's madness, if you ask me. I think there has to be global policing. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? So workforce disruptions, that's what everybody fears. You know, the fear of AI job losses. Generative AI is definitely transforming industries, you know, and its impact is not going to be evenly distributed. The short-term impact is AI is going to augment jobs and it's, and it's not going to fully replace them immediately, you know? Uh, it's going to take a while. And the long-term impact is over the next decade, workforce reductions are going to accelerate as AI improves. So there's going to be first people's going to come in who takes your job, who knows AI, either you're going to be reskilled in AI and keep your job. And then as AI get better and better, it's going to be more job loss, more job loss, more job loss. That's why I say these people ain't thinking about a hundred years, 200 years from now. And then maybe they are, maybe they don't care. Maybe they don't want nobody working no more. Maybe they just want to be able to be rulers and they give you what they want to give you. Unless you're an entrepreneur making it on your own. You know what I'm saying? So, so who's going to survive in this shift? You know, like I said, entrepreneurs who embrace AI and learn how to use it is going to have a competitive advantage. And that's, that's just what it's going to be. Companies that adapt AI driven workflows, they're going to win, you know, companies that don't, they're going to go out of business, you know? So the key industries facing AI disruptions, number one is education. AI powered tutoring is revolutionizing learning. But like I said, it's also going to widen the digital divide because are we going to have access to this. Other countries are already, you might have 30 students in a class and you might have 30 classes looking at one screen with an avatar, it could be an avatar teacher, but at the end of the day, this one teacher is teaching everybody. And because everything is AI driven, they're able to look at the students to see if they're paying attention. They're able to, the computer's able to look at if it's AI driven, look at the students to see who's interested in what topics, who's lacking in what topics, who's the best in these topics, so they can actually put together formulas, particularly and customize for the student. We need to do that over here in America, but we way behind none of the educate. I ain't gonna say none of them, but I know in New York, we not ready. You know what I'm saying? So healthcare, number two, AI can improve diagnostics, but only in facilities with AI powered tools. Are we going to have those in our little local health centers and in low income areas? I doubt it. You know, number three, corporate workflows. Like I said, or AI is definitely automating everything, document processing, customer service, content generation, and it's going to reduce white collar jobs. You know, they have something that just came out called Manus AI that, man, it could do anything. It can do the work of, I'd put it like this. It could do two weeks worth of work in probably 30 minutes. Got to wake up, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So one thing we got to do is we got to ensure that AI benefits are shared equally at the end of the day. You know, we need to navigate this technology revolution carefully. AI literacy is no longer optional. It is mandatory. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, AI reskilling programs. We got to equip workers with AI driven skills to remain employable, ethical AI frameworks, banks, businesses, governments. They got to establish clear AI guidelines, you know, transparent AI systems. 
AI decision models, they got to be explainable. They got to be auditable. You know, I'm going to give you an example. New York City passed a law requiring companies to audit AI driven um, models if they deal with hiring, using AI to hire, using AI to track the, um, you know, the, the, the employee's progress or even just for the whole onboarding system. It has to be mandated in New York City that, or well, it is mandated in New York City that you have to use a third party auditor to, to come in and audit your models. You know what I'm saying? This should be a national standard, period, particularly for, for, um, bias and racism and discrimination. You know what I'm saying? So once again, the AI revolution is here. The question is, are you ready? And if you're not, get with me. I got the one hour course. Um, I got a one hour course for one on one. And we also do group sessions. The price is going to change. So get with us because the price is cheap right now. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, we got to learn now. AI is shaping Hiring, finance, and healthcare. AI is automating jobs and shifting industries. AI is going to create over 100 million jobs, but we got to be 30 to 35 percent. And it's only going to be for those who are prepared. So, what's your next step going to be? You know what I'm saying? Get with me. And once again, like, share, subscribe. It definitely will help the channel. I really want you to learn artificial intelligence so we can all win together. Peace. AI News with AI Europe.